Hi everybody, this is a new topic um, titled Mind Your Language. This is about uh, the abuse of language and the abuse of words to put things into your heads um, and into the minds of everybody. Um, the fact that we entertain concepts and ideas that contradict our reality um, is only really possible for them to do um, because we uh, we readily accept scientific definitions that have um, been assigned to common words and notions. Um, and if we support these meanings of these words, then it leads to all these strange paradoxes and hypotheses and theories. But um, it's just um, you know appropriate to bear in mind that it, in reality it's just an abuse of words and of language. Um, and it's about time we reclaimed the real meanings of these things and not let them get defined by pseudoscience. We're going to start with uh, dihydrogen monoxide, commonly known as, as water, but that's not uh, the word that we're going to look at. Now what we're going to look at is the word level, um, which is a physical property of water. Um, water is a liquid, it's a fluid state of matter, um, it has certain relationships with other bodies, with other fluids. Uh, we can see that in daily life. Um, it's always level. Um, it's always contained. And if it's not, then it will run or flow to find its level. Bodies of water do not demonstrably wrap or stick to the outside of surfaces of solid bodies of any shape or size. Um, and I'm deliberately... Uh, calling out the uh, irrelevant surface tension and the adhesion arguments that people bring, um, which is completely inapplicable to what we're talking about and only to small quantities of water. In fact, it's obvious that water cannot take the form of any stable shape in a 3D space of its own volition. Um, without a, an external agent or a structure or a mode of action that produces the flow in these things, uh, then water will always seek its level and take the shape of its container. Now, there's plenty of evidence of that, but there's no practical evidence to support the contrary idea that um, water can conform to the exterior of a shape. And it really is important to understand the difference between what is real and what is just an idea. It's idealism versus realism. Now, the scientific ID, idea is the goes back to basically to Newton. Um, before that, probably theories of fluid mechanics have always been used to model, you know, and describe certain physical observations. But it's Newton's spinning fluids um, that created this, you know, ideal oblate spheroid. Um, and he did that using his mathematics of fluxian calculus. Um, and that's basically still the accepted model of a spinning space ball covered in water. Um, the different calculus, there was a big fight at the time with Newton and Leibniz. Um, a lot of uh, people um, uh, you know, went on the side of the more algebraic, abstract definitions um, of the calculus, now called integrals and derivatives. Um, but back in the day, Fluxian calculus was Newton's way of doing it. Um, and it was him, basically, that came up with the, the idea of um, this being, you know, spinning fluid to model um, the shape of the Earth. But unfortunately, it forgets one fairly simple thing, um, and that's that water is always level. Um, and that's an obvious contradiction to this scientific interpretation of this model or this idea. So the big scientific interpretation is this level is uh, interpreted to be the curve that the water on the surface of a space ball is supposed to form due to the uniform radial gravitational force of a spinning space ball directed towards its center. And that space ball itself is assumed to be a moving, rotating frame of reference with respect to immensely distant fixed stars, which are themselves assumed to be an absolute frame of reference. So that's the scientific interpretation now of level, um, i.e. that water curves around a planet-sized ball. Um, and you can see how level is basically being redefined to mean something else, which is uh, not the common um, ap application of, of this word. The common application of the word, according to the common uh, Webster dictionary, is a device for establishing a horizontal line or a plane, for example, in a water level, 
the, the difference of altitude of two points, um, the equilibrium of a fluid, um, the even state, water seeks its own level, um, it's an approximately horizontal line of surface, it's practically horizontal surface, it's a plane of a horizon, it's the concentration of a body fluid. Um, all these different things um, are the common use of the word level. Um, and this common use is seen also in daily language. I'm on the ground level of the building. We need to level the garden. We pitched a tent on level ground. The airplane is in level flight. Pictures are hung on walls at eye level. I'm being on the level with you guys, honestly. Um, keep a level head on your shoulders. So as you can see, none of those common uses have anything whatsoever to do with a spinning ball. Um, so it's time to take our words back. Thanks for listening, and we're going to continue this series with more words in the future.